Okay, here at the front hub, one behind the rotor. If you can see this, which probably isn't very easy to see. Um, but down behind the rotor is this fitting. And if you unscrew the 10 millimeter nut and pry it out, you will find two little magnets. And if you look in the hole, you can see if I spin the disc, you can see the little uh, rotating wheel that gives the impulses to the uh, sensor. Oh, there's little teeny teeth down there. So for the right rear wheel, I actually was not getting a signal. I was getting the correct ohms, but uh, when I spun the wheel, it wasn't giving me a signal. And for the rear wheels, the uh, little sensor thing is here, so you just unscrew the nut. So what I did was unscrew the nut, pulled the sensor out, and again, you could see the little uh, reluctor wheel. Uh, the little uh, ridges on it. So I uh, used a paintbrush and uh, some brake cleaner, stuck it in the uh, hole where the sensor was and just wiggled it back and forth to try and clean all the little reductor ridges because someone mentioned on YouTube or somewhere about how even a little bit of you know metallic grit or anything can screw it up. So clean that off. Okay, here's my connector. Just as a FYI, if you pull off the uh, zip strip on the back and peel back the rubber, the uh, cover slides forward and you can get to all your wires or slide it back and put it back together again. So you can do them from the top side too, you don't have to necessarily disconnect it. This thing does have a hook on the nose and a little notch on the back so to put it into the computer, you go in nose first and hook the nose on the little bar on the computer and then you're going to push down and I'm going to pull this back out one more time. Uh, there is a little spring clip here thing that the back of this snaps into. So to remove the uh, connector, you have to kind of reach around both sides of it and push that spring clip down to unclip it. So we're going to hook the nose back in again and then push down and... Okay, so it's clipped and it's clipped now and it's all installed. Now that happens to be a Lincoln computer and this is the computer that actually came with the car, but since I was trying to troubleshoot problems, I wasn't sure if it was a computer or not. Uh, the point of all this is, don't just go searching on eBay for a Ferrari 348 or 355 computer. Uh, by the way, it is the same computer in both cars. 355 and 348s both use the same ABS computer. Um, but if you go online, you'll find they're for like twelve hundred, eighteen hundred dollars, all sorts of absurd um, prices. But if instead you search ATE and then the model number E5LC2C219AA, um, you'll find out that the Lincoln Mark 7 from the late 80s uses the exact same computer. Um, and I bought one for 35 bucks. So, just goes to show the Ferrari tax. So, this is my now spare ABS computer. Okay, so back to my particular problem. I had that ABS light that was on all the time. Um, now, the reason I did not realize my ABS system was not working was uh, there's a little yellow wire over here that someone had cut, and that's the wire that actually makes the ABS light light up. Uh, now, if I had been really clever, I would have noticed that when I first turned the key on, the ABS light should light up and then go out after a couple seconds, and mine never was on at all. Um, so, someone knew there was a problem and just cut the wire so that the uh, ABS light wouldn't come on, but now it's repaired, as you can see. 
Uh, anyway, so I had this ABS light that was on all the time. I checked my wheel sensors. They seemed to be functioning fine. Um, all the uh, the electric pump worked well. Obviously, the switch worked fine because the pump comes on when it's supposed to. And the fact that the pump works meant my uh, hydraulic pump relay was working. Um, they listed on the workshop manual that if your light was on all the time, you know, the various things that could cause it. Uh, the computer was a big one, so that's why I got the $35 replacement computer. Um, hooked it up and ABS light was still on. Um, now the tricky thing about these relays is they are all pretty much Ferrari specific. You can't just go down to AutoZone and buy a replacement relay. Um, so I actually found one of the green ones on eBay for 40 bucks. so that's in the mail. But while I was waiting for that I was screwing around with these other things and I pulled the diode box out and diodes are supposed to let electricity only pass one way through them. Um, you probably won't be able to see this at all, but here's the schematic for the diode box and Basically, you have these little arrows with a line in front of them, and the line is the negative side, the back of the arrow or triangle is the positive side, and it's supposed to let electricity go basically from positive to negative that way, but not go from negative to positive that way. Uh, and according to the schematic, there's basically two diodes in there. So what I did was, looking at the different pins and looking at the schematic which way electricity was supposed to go, I decided to try and see if I could get power to go just one way through them, and actually it seemed to go both ways. So I decided to just pop the cover off the diode box, um, the little black housing comes off and then you're left with the guts inside. And I expected to find some complicated little circuit, but all it was was two diodes soldered to two different pairs of pins. Um, and one of them had a cracked insulator. So off to Radio Shack I went and bought, there was a little teeny diode and a big ass diode. Uh, the good news about these things is they have their numbers uh, printed on the side, which are really easy to read. So I could look them up on the computer and see that these were not Ferrari specific. These are just standard diodes. So off to Radio Shack, and three dollars later, I had two new diodes. So I pulled the other ones off and soldered these on and plugged it in, and damned if the thing didn't work, which surprised the hell out of me. But Everything seems to work now. The ABS light comes on when I turn the key on, goes off after four seconds, and if I hit the brakes hard on a sandy patch, I can feel that pedal pulsing. So, seems to be working. So, if anybody else is having ABS problems, I hope all this helps. It's a complicated system with a lot of things that can go wrong, and unfortunately a lot of Ferrari-specific parts. Um, Lord knows what happens when some of these other relays go and they can't be found. But uh, hopefully yours will keep running also. This is just a photograph of the diode box with the cover off. It's sitting in a vise because uh, I'm about to remove the diodes. But you can see the bigger diode is just um, soldered from this pin to this pin. And the little diode is soldered on this pin and there's a pin in the center here underneath the big one. So one diode, two diodes. That's all that was in there and just remove those and put the new ones in, soldered them in and that was that.